Good afternoon, everybody. I uh, hope we're doing well and, and enjoying the day. So for our uh, penultimate session, um, it'll be on uh, welcoming uh, to the ANU College of uh, Asia and the Pacific. So uh, let's welcome our guests. Uh, well, thank you, Jack. And um, uh, it's just so fantastic to see so many of you here. And um, uh, I've We've just been outside watching the Dean of Science give his presentation, so I know that uh, um, there are people watching outside and we've got people watching online, and it's, um, it is just such a wonderful thing to be able to do this in person after the last couple of years. Uh, my name's Helen Sullivan. I'm a professor of public policy here at the ANU, and I'm also Dean of the College of Asia and the Pacific, which, let me tell you, is the best job in the world. Um, as we begin, I'd like to acknowledge and celebrate the traditional owners of the lands on which we're meeting today. Of course, we here in Cambry are meet, meeting on the lands of the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people. I would like to pay my respects to elders past and present, and also extend those respects to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people with us here today. And of course, acknowledge First Nations people who are with us online. So, You've all made a fantastic decision, number one, to come and, and hear uh, myself and my good colleague, Roald, uh, talk about Asia and the Pacific and why, indeed, um, you should come here and study Asia and the Pacific. And, and for those of us who are sort of immersed in this, um, it always seems like an odd question. I mean, why wouldn't you want to study Asia and the Pacific? This is the fastest growing region in the world. This is where the center of gravity of all things, political, economic, cultural, and Roald will certainly talk about that if you ask him, all of these things are coming together. And here in Australia, we get to be right at the center of all of that, thinking, able to think about and explore really, really important questions about human development, human organization, and how we can think about and solve some of the really challenging problems that the world faces that are felt so acutely here in our region, whether that be climate change, which of course is a, an obvious one, um, particularly uh, for many of our Pacific Islander friends and colleagues. Climate change is something that has been real for a long time and is becoming critical. But beyond that too, we have questions of economics and how we understand the changing economy uh, and what that's going to mean both for us here in Australia, but also for um, our colleagues and friends around the region. But beyond that too, we have questions of, well, how did we get here? How on earth do we understand where we are and how we got to this point in history? And if you come and study at the College of Asia and the Pacific, you'll get to work with incredible people who will help you understand the history of these regions, the countries in those regions, how those countries came to be. They'll help you explore the languages, the traditions, the ways in which societies have formed and what that means for how we understand who we are and our relationships with each other today. All of those things are not just about understanding the past, but they also give us ways of understanding what our options might be in the future. And you don't need me to tell you just what an extraordinary moment in time we are living through. And how for people of, of my generation, which is quite a long time ago, when I was a student, our experience was very, very different to yours. You have had perhaps the most challenging experience of all over the last couple of years, going through COVID, trying to pursue your studies um, in often very, very difficult circumstances. And you're dealing with a world, you're coming into a world that is both still so full of promise, but also has extraordinary challenges to face. And we, those of us who have come before you, are leaving you with some pointers as to how we might do things, a lot of lessons about how we might not do things and how we ought to do things differently. But what happens here at the College of Asia and the Pacific 
is that we bring together the biggest collection of experts in all of the relevant disciplines in the English-speaking world. So if you come and study with us at undergraduate level, at postgraduate level, you will be joining a community of people like nowhere else in the world. People who have devoted their lives to understanding what it means to be part of this region, how we understand what we can achieve in this region, and what it means to develop new knowledge, and how we understand different knowledges and how they interact with each other. So when you come and join us, you, you join a community of people who are dedicated to both disciplinary depths, so if you want to study anthropology, you will get the best education. If you want to study economics, similarly. There's a whole range of disciplines that we study. But what you'll also get is immersion into this extraordinary region, which is going to shape the future of the, the globe. And you'll become a regional specialist. So that's something that you won't get anywhere else. Not just you won't get it anywhere else in Australia. You'll be unlikely to get it anywhere else in the world. And you will engage with people who have lived both the disciplines they study, but also are absolutely dedicated to training the next generation, to working with you to understand where you come from, how you think about the world, and how you might want to think about doing things differently. And you'll work with a bunch of people, a bunch of students, who come also from all over the world. And so we privilege not just different kinds of knowledge, not just understanding in a variety of different ways, but we also privilege the interaction of people from very different backgrounds. Because in order to solve the problems that we face today and tomorrow, we're going to need to learn how to collaborate with each other, how to understand where each of us is coming from and why we think the way we do, and also need to develop ways of working together that are new and different. And if you come and study with us, then certainly as an undergraduate, you have the opportunity to, to study a, a pretty wide range of, of subjects and issues under these, these various headings. Um, they're all broad headings, and that's important because what we want to do is to give you the maximum opportunity to go where you want, to follow your own aspirations and expectations. We have high standards, and we will guide you, but we want to encourage you both to travel up broadly in terms of your mind and your imagination, but also, of course, to travel to, to different places in the region. And to that end, we have a number of relationships with different universities in the region where it is possible for you as an undergraduate to travel abroad and to spend some time in different places. Uh, Ritsumeikan in, in Japan is one of our uh, key partners, uh, but there are many other opportunities for you as an undergraduate to study overseas and to, to bring that knowledge and experience back. And of course, You'll have done your undergraduate degree. That won't be enough. You'll want to go on and do honours. And we have here the opportunity for you to do honours and, and specialise either uh, in Asian studies or the Pacific, uh, whichever um, matters most to you once you've done that undergraduate degree. At a postgraduate level, again, we, we offer a, a huge range of uh, things that you can study. Um, and, and this really does bring together both our focus on the region and what it means to, to be in the Pacific, to be in Asia, and indeed, uh, lots of conversations about what is Asia and how did we come up with that way of understanding um, that part of the world, because it's not uncontested. But you will also get to study how do we solve some of the problems that we face whether it's in public policy, whether it's in national security, whether it's in climate change, whatever it is, there is an opportunity here for you to understand both more about a particular policy area or policy challenge, but also to develop skills in responding to that policy challenge. So as a post at the postgraduate level, we offer uh, a range of, of, of things that will help you 
explore uh, the particular area that you may already be working in, or indeed you may want to, to go and work in. And it's only really by bringing together all of the expertise that we have in the college that we are able to offer both these extraordinary courses, uh, but also uh, to develop the kinds of research and knowledge that go behind the teaching programs that we offer. Um, and what does that mean? Uh, well, what that means is that people who come and study with us go on to extraordinary careers. Um, and we have some up here. Um, many will go on and, and work in government uh, for different parts of the public service, both here and indeed overseas. Others will go and work for major global organizations like the World Bank or the Asia Development Bank. Others will work in the not-for-profit sector and others will go and work in the corporate sector. The skills that you learn, the skills that you develop in the College of Asia and the Pacific are skills that can take you anywhere. And the more we learn about the region, and the more we recognize that we need to be better skilled in engaging with our region and representing ourselves in that region, uh, the, the more we become attractive to employers who need people who can work across those different boundaries. So lots and lots of opportunities. And um, as you can tell, I'm absolutely passionate about what we do um, in the college, and I'm really proud of what we do in the college. Um, I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Roald, now, Roald Maliankai, who is a, an associate professor in the college, and he's going to talk a little bit more about the student experience. I do want you to forgive the fact that um, <laughs> somehow his hoodie didn't make it uh, to him. Um, so unlike the rest of us, he's not in a uniform. But that tells you quite a lot about Roald. Um, so I'm going <laughs> to hand over to, to him now. <laughs> Thanks, Helen. Um, so one thing that I'm uh, very proud of is that in our college, we really embrace diversity. And, and I cannot emphasize that enough. Uh, it's easy to say that you value in, uh, inclusivity and diversity and so on. But in our college, I feel we actually are driving towards making this a very inclusive, diverse college, which is quite um, um, a, relatively new development perhaps, perhaps too late development, but very important development to the people who work there and the students we have. It's a wonderful place to be, the college. I think it's, um, I don't want to compare our college to other colleges. We're just the best, so there's no real point uh, to comparison. But it's, um, it's, um, it's a very um, uh, diverse community, also in terms of people's expertise. And one of the things that, um, and I'm not sure if we have the right slide, let me just forward, oops, there we are. Um, one of the things that this also relates to is people's individual passions, their hobbies. Things that may, you may, as, as, a, as a student, have thought that maybe might make you not perfect material for a university like ANU, but I think that's wrong. I think our college in particular would embrace people who have very special interests in things. And it may be the things that you thought would probably actually disadvantage you that we actually think has extra value. So if you have a particular hobby in, for example, building Gundam robots or, for example, food science or all those things like, um, that, that are related more to perhaps hobbies like... Um, toys, uh, manga, anime, all those things, um, we study that, we teach about that, and we need you to join us. So we have a lot of, um, as Helen already pointed out, we have a lot of um, degrees in things that look good on paper and will probably guarantee you a fantastic career. But I think studying in general is something you do for yourself as well. So please bear that in mind, uh, even if your parents tell you that you need to get that job and it's good to study accounting. Well, one thing you could do is study accounting and doing study in Asia and the Pacific. So the ANU offers this kind of double degree program, which means you can do, do, you can do two degrees in 
almost the space of one, so two full degrees in four years. Our college also adds this year in Asia program uh, for those people who want to study abroad. And we have a lot of programs that um, allow you uh, to come to, for example, Korea, Japan, China, Thailand, Vietnam, and so on and so forth, to take uh, language courses over there, as well as continue with your own degree. And I, I would like everyone to think of the possibility of mixing things. So perhaps you want to study public policy and music. Uh, perhaps that's actually a better degree than public policy and, let's say, domestic law if you're not that passionate about domestic law. I think what's really important for everyone is that they follow their passions. And I think one of the things that I found is that in this particular college, I can pretty much do what I, and I quickly, <laughs> can kind of pretty much do what I like in terms of what I spent my time studying and researching, even teaching. And so we also respond to students uh, with our courses. We, we listen to our students as much as we can, and we try to kind of react to specific interests and needs. So we have all these exchange programs um, to these countries up here. And, and we have very good support. For if, so if you are win worried now, looking at these names of countries and thinking, yeah, I'll never get there, I can't afford it, there are scholarships, and there's also very good people in the college to help you get there, so both practically and financially. So please check the link um, at the bottom, I believe, here, for scholarships, and do explore that. And again, this is something you would also do for yourself, not just because you can get a really good career with it. Finally, I think um, what makes our college, and this is something that Helen already pointed out, really special, is that we don't just teach about public policy or international relations or security, but we teach about that through our direct engagement with the people involved. Um, so if you're now worried, like, I cannot speak any language, this is exactly why we train you the way we do. So you can study up to six, 16 languages in our college from the start. So please join us, and we'll guide you through uh, up to a level that will allow you to maybe do interviews, to speak to the people on the ground in all these areas of the Asia and the Pacific. And one thing that um, some people forget is that it's not just about talking to the people involved, it's also about understanding where other people get their information from, what kind of news they read, what kind of information culture they, they live inside of. And our experts are, understand those complexities, and they can help you kind of, um, they can direct you to that information. All right, I'll finish um, here. I think it's important that if you have any questions, we kind of have a policy in our college to respond very, very quickly and as best as we can. So if you have any uh, follow-up question, there's people still in Mary Ray building who can help you. Um, I'm around, usually. Um, but there's lots of people to provide support on travel, on what kind of degree to to take how you would combine these two degrees, one in a different college and one with us, etc. So please come and talk to us. Thank you. Would you guys be interested in doing questions? We've got about another five minutes. Yeah, sure. um, cool. I suppose if anybody has a question, I can run a mic to you and then Oh, sorry. Um, if you have any questions, I can run a mic to you, like the one I'm using now. Um, so, yeah, okay, beautiful. Third row, or fourth. I'm meant to be doing a math major. <laughs> um, is the language aspect compulsory? And if so, can you fit that in with a double degree? It's, it's not compulsory. So. You can join your Asian Pacific and not speak any other language than English. Of course, we encourage you to take an Asian uh, or Pacific language. Um, but yeah, you don't have to. So if that, 
Um, if that's something you're worried about, then yeah, you shouldn't worry. Um, it's still in, we, we still encourage you, obviously. And it depends on what kind of degree you take. Whether If you do a double degree, you will have less space. We used to call it the flexible double degree. Well, <laughs> we realized after a few years it wasn't actually that flexible because we're trying to cram two degrees into four years. So you don't have that much space, but in the first uh, year in particular, there's a lot of electives built in, into this structure. So in the first year, you could definitely kind of take one language and see if you like it, and then uh, perhaps follow up with that particular language, or, or take a different one. What would you say the benefits are to studying international security in this faculty rather than, I'm not sure what other one it is, but it was available in, yeah. In yeah, so the, the, <laughs> the vice chancellor likes to say that one of the marks of a great university is that you have more than one department of lots of things. <laughs> and, and so at this university, we have two departments of anthropology, uh, one in the College of Asia and the Pacific and one in the College of Arts and Social Sciences. Um, and we also have... Uh, well, several departments of economics, but we won't go into that. Um, so the, the, I suppose the difference, um, and we all work very closely together, that's the other thing to say. Um, so if you're interested in international relations broadly, but you have a particular interest in international security, then um, what, what you get from, from, from us in, in studying that is both some of the world's experts in international security, so, so people who are leading the field in the world, um, but also people who have a deep understanding of what those security questions mean in the context of this region. Um, and of course, this region is hugely important in terms of international security, as, as I'm no doubt you're, you're aware. So um, there are, uh, and there are always opportunities because we do as colleges work very closely together. So there are always opportunities if you, you come and you study international security with us, but there's a particular course that you want to do in another faculty, in another college, that's absolutely fine. We can usually make that work. Um, so you shouldn't feel, it, as Roald says, follow your passion, um, and then what we can help you do, and we have amazing people uh, in, the, in the college and across the university that can help you do that, is we can help you put a program together that allows you to focus on the, the things that you're interested in, uh, while at the same time enabling you to get a really good degree uh, in a reasonable time. So what I'm saying is you don't really have to choose. Beautiful. Well, I think, um, unfortunately, that's... Oh, can uh, we go for one more? Can we go? We're on a roll. I guess, yeah, we've got, we got five minutes. Okay, we'll go for one more. We'll do a quickie. I'm just looking to see our colleagues, well, and we're not going to allow them to ask questions. <laughs> um, how does the year in Asia work, and does it add extra time onto, like, a normal double degree? Oh, wow, you're ambitious. Rold? Uh, yes, it adds one year. So it adds one year to a regular degree. Uh, and, but you can take courses, but it's kind of expected that you take non-language courses as well as language courses. Um, we send people usually in their third year because we would like them to have at least kind of low intermediate level when they go based on people really starting from scratch, which is partly because of security. You know, if you cannot um, um, call a taxi when you're completely drunk, uh, and, and get back to your, that your dormitory. Ever happens. <laughs> Which of course never happens. But um, so we, yeah, we uh, send people generally around their third year. Yeah. I, I strongly recommend you do. It. Again, this is something that will, of course, help you with your with your career, but also for yourself. And we we always find that people who have spent a considerable amount of time in Asia or the Pacific, that that part. Um, stays with them in that they often maintain some degree of engagement with Asia and the Pacific throughout their lives. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Well, um, let's, let's thank these two. <laughs> from all across Australia. 
and from all corners of the earth. We come because we are called to face the complex challenges of a changing world. We come seeking space to discover and to imagine a nation's future. We come to a global capital, to a hub of progress, to the heart of change. We come to meet each other and to meet tomorrow for tomorrow's sake. We come because we are called to define our futures at the meeting place. Are you thinking about moving away from home to come to ANU? I did. And today, I want to show you around so you can see why I love it so much. This is Cambry, the central hub of the uni. And it's a great place to grab a coffee on the way to a lecture. Now I want to show you the Ambush Gallery. They often put on exhibitions of student art here. And the exhibition opening nights are always a lot of fun. Now I'm going to show you along the residential halls of Daily Rose. Because I moved to Canberra from Queensland, I found it such a relief that ANU has an accommodation guarantee for all incoming first year students. Also, as you can see, there are so many great accommodation options to choose from. Hope you've enjoyed the tour today. Make sure you get online and apply now. Do you want me to show you what a typical day at AMU looks like? Let's go. The best thing about AMU is the campus is everything you need. We've got a club line, which is an amazing gym. We've got the libraries and student central, which are great places if you need support. And most of all, we've got chart time. The class size is really small here, which makes it so much easier to get one-to-one -one support. Well, there's a lights festival one tonight called Enlightened, so I reckon I'm going to head there. Uh, so I'll see you in a couple hours and I'll show you around. Hope you enjoyed the day. Thanks for joining. I will see you next week. I'm a student at ANU and I want to tell you why I moved to Melbourne to start uni and then moved back to go to ANU. Basically, I'm from Canberra, I grew up here and I decided to move to Melbourne when I was 19 to start uni because I just wanted to change and to experience big city life. But actually what I found was big city life was really overwhelming and really not a great environment for studying and ultimately I decided to move back. When I decided to move back, the application process was actually super easy. I just applied like you usually would and used my marks from my last year in Melbourne. There's so much to do here, like everything that you want to do in a big city you can do in Canberra, but everything here is just so much more accessible. I kind of wish that someone had just told me that earlier because Canberra's incredible and I kind of don't know why I left in the first place. Do the winters get easier? <laughs> no. Alright, let's do it. I'm Jack, I study PPE, I'm from Rockhampton, Queensland. What surprised you the most when you moved to Canberra? I would say like maybe how convenient everything is. Got kind of like a big city vibe, but in like a small city kind of layer. So it's easy to kind of get around everywhere. What was the hardest part about leaving home? It wasn't anything like homesickness or anything like that for me. I don't know, I, I, I mean, I've really liked it. Do the winters get easier? Well, I'll tell you what, they were a lot easier when I was in college and we had heating in the rooms. They'd probably get easier because you're more prepared for them. That's probably the, the positive, the positive outtake here. We come from all across Australia and from all corners of the earth. We come because we are called to face the complex challenges of a changing world. We come seeking space to discover 
and to imagine a nation's future. We come to a global capital, to a hub of progress, to the heart of change. We come to meet each other and to meet tomorrow for tomorrow's sake. We come because we are called to define our futures at the meeting place.